Welcome to Deep Dive Defense, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Over here we give rare insights you won't hear elsewhere. Today's video focuses on an exclusive group of nations, those capable of producing supersonic ramjet-powered strike weapons. The rarity of these missiles and the limited access to them stems from their unique ability to fly at sea-skimming altitudes, extremely low, while achieving useful ranges and sustaining supersonic speeds of Mach 2 or higher. Sustaining such speeds at minimal altitudes allows these missiles to execute aggressive evasive maneuvers without the drastic speed loss that would occur for unpowered glide weapons. Comparing ramjet propulsion to conventional solid fuel rocket motors reveals a critical advantage. Ramjet powered cruise missile offers substantially greater range for equivalent size and weight. Having outlined these benefits, it's essential to differentiate ramjet powered weapons from other supersonic systems like anti-ship ballistic missiles, ASBMs. Although ASBMs have been developed for decades, China became the first nation to operationally field them in the late 2000s. Analyzing China's DF-21D ASBM alongside Russia's high-end P-800 Onyx ramjet-powered anti-ship cruise missile highlights distinct operational profiles. The Onyx has a higher likelihood of approaching a heavily defended warship undetected until the final moments thanks to its sea-skimming trajectory, which delays detection due to the Earth's curvature. Additionally, ocean wave clutter helps to obscure its radar signature. In contrast, the DF-21D's ballistic trajectory allows earlier detection, but compensates with higher terminal speeds, necessitating long-range, high-performance interceptors for engagement. In their terminal phases, both missiles typically overwhelm short-range surface-to-air defenses and close-in weapon systems due to their velocity. However, the DF-21D's impact speed exceeds that of ramjet cruise missiles by 1 to 2 Mach numbers. To summarize, ramjet-powered cruise missiles excel in stealthy approaches, slashing warning times to approximately 30 seconds, while ASBMs like the DF-21D grant a superpower like the U.S. sufficient early detection via its infrared satellite constellation to alert targeted ships, a rare capability limited to the U.S., Russia, and possibly China. Despite Russia and China leading in advanced ramjet technologies, the U.S. notably abstained from developing comparable ramjet-powered anti-ship weapons. This decision stems from the robust layered defenses of U.S. warships such as the Aegis Combat System with its standard missile interceptors, coupled with close-in systems like Phalanx, Sea Ram, and Sea Sparrow. These defenses historically compelled adversaries like the Soviet Union to create weapons capable of penetrating such layered defenses. On the other hand, most U.S. adversaries lacked equivalent defensive capabilities, reducing the incentive for the U.S. to invest in ramjet strike missiles. Despite pursuing ramjet applications in 1950s to 60s surface to air missiles. Another factor is the extreme technical challenge of mastering efficient ramjet designs for long range strike roles. The Soviet Union and France achieved this early, with China joining their ranks after acquiring Russian P 270 Moscow missile technology in the 1990s. Critical to ramjet development is advanced metallurgy, particularly titanium alloys demanding industrial expertise possessed only by technologically advanced nations. Let's examine the nations that have developed long-range ramjet-powered strike weapons. The most advanced in this field was the Soviet Union, now succeeded by Russia, which boasts the renowned Zircon hypersonic ramjet-powered cruise missile, the most sophisticated weapon of its type publicly known. Beyond the cutting-edge Zircon, Russia's current tactical ramjet-powered strike arsenal relies on two systems, the high-end P-800 Onyx, and the simpler, more compact and cost-effective KH-31 Krypton. Interestingly, these two missiles are foundational to most ramjet-powered strike weapons globally, making their names essential to remember. China holds the second rank in ramjet strike missile technology, deriving its expertise from the Russian P-270 Moskit and the KH-31 Krypton. Though China experimented with ramjet missiles before the 1990s, it was only after acquiring technology from these systems that it began developing efficient long-range ramjet weapons in the late 1990s, continuing into the present day. Beside the secretive strategic DF-100, the YJ-12 stands as China's premier Tatchul ramjet strike missile, based on the advanced KH-31 Krypton. 
While China later developed a counterpart to the P800 Onyx, its focus remains on the KH31-derived family, likely due to the design's lower complexity solutions and cost efficiency. Third rank in ramjet advancement is less definitive, but likely belongs to France. Ambiguity arises because France's ASMP ramjet strike weapon serves as a primary nuclear delivery system alongside its submarine-launched ballistic missiles, resulting in limited public data. However, given its role as a nuclear platform and its development timeline stretching from the 1980s to today, the ASMP is presumed to be a highly advanced and efficient ramjet strike missile, the sole such example in the Western Hemisphere. Its existence underscores that the absence of similar US or British systems reflects strategic choices, not any inherent flaws in ramjet technology. India and South Korea share the fourth and fifth positions, having acquired Russian technology transfers for the P-800 Onyx. India's long-term licensing agreement led to the BrahMos variant, entering license production around the late 2000s. South Korea's case is less transparent, resembling its discrete acquisition of Russian S-350 technology for the KMSAM surface-to-air missile. Unlike India, South Korea seems to have lacked a production license, instead developing its variant using Soviet design data, a challenge explaining why its missile remains in testing phase, unnamed, and not believed to be an operational. Japan claims sixth place with its ASM-3 anti-ship cruise missile, a recent development not yet known to be operational. Leveraging Japan's advanced metallurgy and 2010s-era computational simulation advancements, the ASM-3 could rank among the most efficient ramjet weapons in its range and size class. Like France's ASMP before it, its late development highlights the enduring tactical value of ramjet-powered systems globally, whether in Eastern or Western-aligned nations. Seventh place belongs to Iran, a newcomer just confirmed in 2025, with its KH-31 crypt on based anti-ship missile, details of which remain unclear. It is uncertain whether the missile is operational or still in prototyping. Iran's choice of the KH-31 design aligns with its strategy to avoid costly, complex developments where possible. This missile competes with Iran's indigenous anti-ship ballistic missiles, such as the Zohair and Zulfagar e Basir variants, which boast longer ranges than ramjet-powered systems. However, Iran faced greater hurdles than India or South Korea, relying on smuggled black market samples to reverse engineer its design without Russian assistance. While Iran's first anti-ship ballistic missiles emerged in the late 2000s, it took approximately 15 additional years for the country to develop its KH-31-based missile. This is a timeline that underscores the significant technical challenges involved in efficiently mastering this technology, as well as the metallurgical foundation required by Iran's domestic industry to enable cost-effective production of such systems. Rank 8, though not entirely definitive, is given to Taiwan and its Xiong Feng-3 supersonic ramjet-powered anti-ship missile. Throughout the 1990s and 2000s, Taiwan engaged in intense military competition with China, striving to match its rivals' capabilities across all weapon classes. When China acquired the P-270 Mosquit in the 1990s, Taiwan initiated a major project to develop a comparable system, culminating in the Xiong Feng-3, which is believed to have completed development by the late 2000s. While Taiwan's industrial and metallurgical capacities theoretically could support the creation of an advanced ramjet missile, it is believed that the nation lacked access to sophisticated ramjet designs during the Xiong Feng 3's development phase. Though potential access to smuggled technology, such as the MA-31 target missiles sold by Russia to the US, whose layout closely resembles the Xiong Feng 3, cannot be ruled out. The likely absence of a mature starting point and the missile's relatively early development timeline likely resulted in a less refined design. This is somewhat evident in the Xiong Feng 3's use of two side-mounted solid propellant boosters, whereas more advanced systems like the P270 and KH-31 integrate their solid propellant boost motor directly behind the combustion chamber. However, the strategic need for Taiwan to field a Mach 2-3 class anti-ship cruise missile driven by the overwhelming superiority of the Chinese Navy, remained so critical that Xiong Feng 3 development has continued into the present day. As recently as 2025, imagery of an air-launched Xiong Feng 3 variant surfaced, 
showcasing a redesigned configuration that eliminates the side-mounted boosters in favor of a smaller rear-mounted booster. This modification leverages the initial velocity provided by air-launched platforms. For Taiwan, deploying sea-skimming supersonic ramjet anti-ship missiles is deemed essential to countering Chinese naval dominance, reflecting a broader trend among Western-aligned nations to prioritize such systems for their ability to penetrate and neutralize advanced warship defenses. Unexpectedly, Rank 9 is assigned to the United States, which currently lacks an operational ramjet-powered strike missile, but has developed the CQM-163 Coyote as a target practice missile designed to emulate such threats. The Coyote could be relatively easily adapted into a functional ramjet anti-ship missile, but its performance would be low. Its development originated in the 1990s as a replacement for Russian MA-31, a downgraded KH-31 Krypton target missile variant. The U.S. acquired it during the Yeltsin era when cash-strapped Russia sold this KH-31 variant for testing naval defenses. At the time, China's acquisition of the P-270 Moskut and U.S. efforts to modernize CRAM and Phalanx close-in weapon systems underscored the need for an indigenous target missile, leading to the Coyote. The Coyote's inclusion at rank 9 stems from its short range and small payload, optimized for target drone rolls, with engagements typically occurring at 30 to 40 kilometers when it appears over the horizon, rendering it the least capable ramjet-powered system in this comparison. In summary, these nine nations make an exclusive group possessing ramjet strike missile technology, a status likely to remain so in the near term, with only a team of European countries and the U.S. actively pursuing to enter upper ranks of this group. The tactical value of ramjet-powered missiles lies in their ability to degrade adversary defenses through late detection, often leaving defenders with roughly 30 seconds to react. Modern defensive systems can execute only a finite number of engagement cycles within this time window. When faced with simultaneous launches of multiple low-altitude, supersonic ramjet missiles executing aggressive evasive maneuvers, even the most advanced warship defenses are at risk of being overwhelmed. This increases the probability of at least one missile breaching the defenses. The immense kinetic energy carried by such weapons ensures that a single strike can inflict catastrophic damage. All these advantages, stealthy approach profiles, high speed evasion, and destructive potential, explain why ramjet-powered strike missiles are regarded as exceptionally penetrative, and why their proliferation remains very limited. Their rarity underscores the technical and industrial barriers to producing them, as well as their transformative impact on modern naval warfare. So that's all for today. If you liked it, give a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. It really makes a difference in the YouTube algorithm and is a great support to the channel. The real enthusiast can become members and given access to exciting membership area material. Thanks for your support and motivation. See you next time.